Bible says God cuts covenant Abraham and walks through the sacrifice himself. I believe God because our God is able. Our God is able. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to overcome. The point is, is that you overcome. Thank you, team. Thank, Thank you. you, Lord. Just remain standing, please. Just remain standing. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Who has he lifted up today? Who's been lifted up today? Lifted up. The Bible says he's a lifter of my head. And the enemy tries to bring your head down. The Bible says he is the lifter of my head. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. What you can't sing about, you can say. Let's just say something to all, every one of us in the church. Just begin to open your mouth. Now play for us, please. Just begin to open your mouth and just thank him. Father, we thank you for being the lifter of my head today. Come on, every one of you in here, every believer, just stop all the walking around. Just focus now. Thank you, Father. You have lifted my head. You did that, Lord. You did that. You did that. You lifted Brother Ashley's head. You lifted my head. You've lifted all of our heads. Today is a congregation of people whose heads have been lifted. We thank you today. We thank you, Father. We thank you. The enemy wants to try to make our heads drop, but you are the lifter of our head, Lord. We give you praise today. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. We worship you. Anybody here love Jesus in this church? Oh, Makitare. Welcome to our friends online. We welcome you. Come on, help us worship God for a few minutes. Help us magnify the Lord in here today. Oh, come before his presence with singing. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's right. Just, 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 just free flow. There's a beautiful song that we just were singing. Ah. Hallelujah. That's what he is. He's your peace and he is your strength. That's right. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just look across to the person on your left and on your right. And just say hello, good afternoon, lovely to see you. Look in front as well. If there's anyone behind you, just look at them and say, hi, ah, you're looking good. Yeah, that's right. Come on, compliment them. Tell them they're looking good. They're looking good. I like, I like what you're wearing today. I like that top. It's a nice top. I like that top. Amen. Ah, that's right. Blow some kisses around. Blow some kisses, all right. To our friends online, we blow you kisses, amen. That's right, that's right, that's right. We welcome you. We welcome you here today. We welcome you. We welcome you today. Welcome to the house of God. Welcome, 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 welcome. That's right, find another person beside you. Just say hello to them. Yeah, come on, hello, wow. To my friends online, welcome, welcome, welcome. We absolutely love you. Thank you for joining us today. Our only desire is to worship the Lord. That's our only desire is to worship God. That's our only desire is to worship God. And to put a smile on your face. Let's see a little smile. Can I see a smile? Woo! Let me take a selfie for you now. All right. Very good. Very good. Very good. Amen. He's a good God, church. He's a good God.
has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? <laughs> He's a good God, church. He is a good God. And he has been good to us. In all different ways, in all different ways, he's been good to us. Sometimes he's good to us and we don't even know he's been good to us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Let's worship the Lord a little more. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Let's walk around the altar of sacrifice. Ah, what a good God. What a, what a good God. What a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. How many worshipers are here today? How many worshipers are here? How many people here love the Lord in here? Now forget about all the distractions. Let's just come on. Let's just love on him. Oh God, we love you today. Woo! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Stir yourself. Stir yourself. Say to your soul, soul, I magnify the Lord. <laughs> ah, come on, come on, soul. Come on, soul. Wake up. My spirit wants to worship God. Come on, buddy. You get into line. Obey the voice of the spirit. Because all we want to do is worship God in here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, this is time to worship the Lord. The Bible says, in the beauty of holiness. Be ah. Ah. Be ah. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Be glorified. Yeah. Be glorified. You only need to let your spirit free. Be you might know this one online, church. You might know this one. Be glorified. Be glorified where? Be glorified in the temple. Be glorified in the earth. Come on, help me, somebody. Be glorified in the heaven. Yes, Lord. Jesus. That's right. Jesus. Be thou glorified. Where? Come on, sing us. Help me. Be glorified in the temple. Come on, somebody. Be glorified in the earth. <laughs> Be glorified in the heavens. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Be thou. Be thou glorified. One more time, we're going from the top. Be glorified. That's it, you got it, it's all right. Be glorified. Yeah, hallelujah. Be glorified. Help me somebody. Be Going on now. Be glorified. No matter what's taking place. Be glorified. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be
What a God. 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 Ah, isn't he worthy? <laughs> Isn't he worthy? Isn't he worthy? Isn't he worthy to be glorified? Be thou lifted up in this temple. Be thou lifted up in this church. Be thou lifted up on the earth. Be thou lifted up in the heavens. Jesus, Jesus, be thou glorified. Amen. That's why we're here, to glorify the Lord. To glorify the Lord. We glorify the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Jesus, be thou glorified. Ah, be thou glorified. That's why we're here, Lord, to glorify your name. Lord, we glorify your name. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. That's why we're here. Be thou glorified. That's why we're here. Be thou That's glorified. why you're here. To glorify. Be thou glorified. To use the fruit of your lips. To glorify the Lord. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the camp. Revive. <laughs> oh, that's right. Jesus. 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 Be thou glorified. Amanda. Jesus. Jesus, be thou glorified. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? We declare, be thou glorified. Jesus, Jesus, be thou glorified. Over everything, over every situation over every circumstance, over every feeling, over every emotion, over every spirit. <laughs> Be thou glorified. <laughs> Get him higher. You see, church, he's higher. The Bible says he's been given the name, which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee, every knee, all right, I could stay here all day. You know me. This is my this is my party. This is my ravings. This is where I come and do my jump up. I don't go out. I don't party. I don't rave. You ain't ever gonna find me in a club. I've done my bit. Now this is it. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm not knocking anyone who does what they want to do, but for me, this is where I come. Amen. Anybody here? I know why you can't say amen. Some of you have been going clubbing in it. That's what it is. <laughs> all right. But that's all right. The Lord won't judge no one. Amen. The Bible says we're going to judge, but the Bible says we will be judge of no man. That's if we live according to his word. Amen. All right. That, that went down really low. That one went down. My goodness me. All right. All right. Let me take a moment just to welcome you here today. Welcome you to WGMI. This is Word of God Ministry International, the place where miracles happen. Amen. Anybody want to say amen to that? Uh, you know, I tell you, uh, I want a louder one than that. I need a louder one. I need a louder one than that. Yeah, the place where miracles happen. Place where miracles happen. Miracles. Miracles are happening. <laughs> Praise God. Last week after, remember last week, we, re we released the blessing last week, didn't we? Lord, the Holy Spirit was present with us. There was an unction in the house. And somebody came to me afterwards. We, we spoke something, spoke a word. person came to me after and said, Pastor, you were spot on. This is something that's been happening to me all my childhood. But the Holy Ghost just dealt with that spirit 
last week in Jesus name amen Jesus name the blessing the blessing the blessing the blessing all week my spirit has just been on that the blessing I know that God imparted in the lives of families last Sunday amen all right so we welcome you we've done our welcomes thank you all for joining us today uh, we're going to go into the um, word shortly, but let's have Lord's Supper. Those of you online, if you take a moment or two, you can grab yourself some, um, some um, uh, wine, four-part diluted. Wine, four-part diluted. Wine, red wine, four-part diluted, or some Ribena, or something you know you, that you can use, and a piece of bread or matzahs, whatever you have. And I say four-part diluted because what we don't want to do is for you to become drunk in the flesh. The idea is for you just to have something that symbolizes the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So those of you who are in the house, if you want to put your hand up, if you haven't got one of the sacraments, and they will be brought to you. Let's go over, please, to uh, um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and uh, we'll take it from 23. Praise God. I probably need 15 minutes to open this. Oh, no, it's been prepared for me. Thank you very much because, yeah, you know, my fingers and fiddling about. Amen. <laughs> yeah, see, it, it triggered again, didn't it? Triggered. That's right. That's what the Holy Ghost does. It triggers things in your spirit. All right, nice and settled, everyone prepared, our friends online, you're joining us, you've got your, your bread and your wine, just to teach you on this subject one more time, for I've received from the Lord, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and from verse 23, for I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. Now, I, I always like to emphasize this to you, notice what it says in verse 23, he said he received it. No one taught him it. Amen? Things that I preach or things that I might teach you or others, they are things that we've studied. They are things that we have meditated and the Holy Spirit's dropped things in us. Paul um, it says, I received straight from the Lord. And he says, now I've received it, I'm delivering it to you. Amen? That the Lord Jesus, remember now, he was not there. He was not there. He was not there. He was a persecutor of the church. But now he's telling us things about what took place when he was not there. How did he get that? That's the Holy Spirit downloading into him, revealing things. So he said, the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, that he took bread. Uh, uh, um, he, the, the, this is, he broke it. No, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is? broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Could you, could you go back, please, Brother Bala? He had given thanks. This is Paul telling us through the Holy Spirit what Jesus did on the night in which he was betrayed. That he took bread and when he had given thanks. It's that defining moment in history. He's about to go to the cross church. He's about to give up his life. No man takes my life from me. I lay it down. And my daddy told me that I can lay it down and I can take it up again. He said, this I have from my father. Amen. Beautiful. He broke the bread. It's symbolic of his body. When you take the Lord's Supper, you're not just doing something that you've done for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. What you're doing is you are participating in a prophetic statement a remembrance of what Jesus did for us. Amen. It's essential that you never take the Lord's Supper dizzy, giddy or immature. 
that you take it seriously. Amen? You don't have to be so serious that you don't smile, but you take it seriously in your spirit. Amen? That you do it with maturity, with consciousness. That's the word I'm looking for. Amen? Do it with awareness. Don't want to just, I know the scripture, I could quote it all. You could close the book and I could quote it for you because I've been reading this scripture since I was 17. But I want to do it so that everyone here today does it with an awareness in their spirit. Is that, is that good? Is that the right way to approach this? Amen. A stillness needs to come upon the house. A stillness needs to come upon the house as we reverence the Lord at this time. Amen? Amen. When he had given thanks, he broke it. You see that? You see, this? You see the prophetic action? He broke the bread. He gave up his body. He broke the bread. Nobody, nobody took away his body. He, he, very often when we have good, you know, Passover Friday and we, oh tragedy it wasn't a tragedy at all it was a triumph it wasn't a tragedy Jesus laid down his life it was the most it, it was the most selfless act in human history it was a triumph for us amen so now I've got your attention let's approach this with the right heart Then he breaks it and says, here, disciples, come on, take, participate. Here, have some. This is mine. This is my body. Yeah, this is me now, and, uh, which is broken for, for you. <laughs> and I want you every time you do it, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, I want, when you do it, do this to remember me. You see what I mean, church? Because it's easy to forget, isn't it? In a world that is so chaotic and full of stuff. And we forget. And we approach it. He says, do it to remember me. Amen? So we're going to do, do this in remembrance of me. Let's go further, please. In the same manner, he, he also took the cup after supper, now we've had teachings here about Passover and the various meals. So this, what we're doing instantly would have happened after maybe two or three different other meals in the process. But for time, we're just doing these two main ones now. Amen? After supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. We talk about New Testament, Old Testament. This is the New Testament. This is the new covenant in my blood. In my what? In my blood, church. In my blood. This is being, he, and, and he's doing it before he's died. You see the prophetic action? He hasn't, been, he hasn't been crucified yet, but he says, this is the new covenant in my blood. Where is his blood? It's not been shed yet, but it, it, in his mind, it had been shed already. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, again, in remembrance of me. Because of time, I won't go through any more of the verse. Instead, what I'm going to do is open up mine, if you can meet the challenge as well. Those of you online, have you probably got a nice piece of cracker or something in your hand? That's good. Father, we thank you. Mind, oh, lava, sit up. We thank you for this, this honor. It strikes me as a privilege to stand here, Lord, with the congregation of the righteous to participate, to remember you, what you did for us. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. May it never go down in history that in this church, we never thanked you for what you did for us. We remember the agony and yet the triumph of the cross. 
we thank you. We thank you for your broken body and your shed blood. Thank you. We remember you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Come on, let's, let's eat together as one family. Amen. And praise God. Let's drink now. Let's drink together. This is my blood shed for you. Let's remember together. Amen. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Let's just pray together. Come on. Grab someone's hand if you can. If online with us, you're with us. If you can, if it's not too awkward or uncomfortable, just get the person's hand beside you. Just pray with them gently, quietly. Just remember them. Just say, Father, I just, you know, present Johnny or Jane before you. If it's your husband or you, whoever it is, just pray, you know, simple prayer over their lives right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. I'm up here with the musicians, so I'm praying with the musicians today. Thank you for them, Lord. Thank you for their lives. Thank you. We give you praise today for them. Bless them, Lord, their gifts and their talents in your house. Thank you. Together we remember what you did for us. We're so grateful to you. We give you praise in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Remember, remember, we remember. This we do in remembrance of you. We remember, we remember, we remember. Together, Riley and I, we remember. May I, Sister Esther and I, we remember you. And Brother Andrew and I, we remember the four of us, we remember you. Remember what you did. We bring it to the forefront of our mind. We bring it to the fore. We take it from the background and bring it to the foreground of our memory. Bring it to the present time. Yes, it happened many years ago, but it happened today for us. We receive your redemption, <laughs> your deliverance and your freedom. We thank you for it now. We give you praise for our liberty and our freedom. Thank you that we face a brighter future. Thank you that we have been restored again. <laughs> Fellowship has been renewed through your blood, through your broken body. But ultimately you rose oh, with a mighty triumph over your foes. We give you praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Amen. Praise God. Oh, 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 ah, oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't he wonderful? Wonderful. Thank you. Such a wonderful God, isn't he? I love him so much. Thank you. All right. God bless you. Those of you who participate with us online, God bless you. Thank you for joining us in that area. We're going to collect up the afternoon sides and offering. Let's just do that now so that we're not, you know, chasing around at the end. And let's give it the right attention that it deserves. Those of you who've got your tithes and your offering you want to give. Um, I want to say this to you while you're preparing your tithes and offering. We need to buy some equipment in the church. Don't, I, don't want, I don't want you to get scared and get all nervous on me. I just want you to hear me. Friends online, I want you to help me with this as well if you can. We need to buy some new equipment, some digital equipment. At the moment, our desk is what they call analog, and it's a good desk, but it's not good enough for what we're trying to do in terms of our digital presence. We need to, we need to upgrade. 
we need to upgrade, we need to upgrade. And the upgrade is going to cost us a few thousand, about six or seven thousand, no problem at all. No problem at all, we're going to spend, it may even be more, might even be more. So as the Lord blesses you and as you're led by the Spirit, I want you to just put something in an envelope or put it online and put on it digital. <laughs> All right? So that it doesn't get absorbed in other things. I want to be able to tell you in a few weeks time, boom, it's been paid off. All right? It's been paid. That's how we're going to do it. That's how we're going to do it. That's the budget. It's about if we aim for seven, let's aim for seven. So we aim for seven. Amen. We aim for 7,000. All right. So we're believing God together as a church for. All right. Then we're on 14. All right. Now, now, now I want you to listen carefully to me. Listen carefully to me. The board will tell you this and I'm speaking openly so everyone can hear me. The board will tell you we've been having these conversations for months. And I said, no, no, wait, 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 wait. And the Lord said to me the other day, why? Why are you waiting? And I was said, well, Lord, I'm waiting because I, he said, no, don't wait. Trust me. So this, I'm doing what he told me to do. So all I'm saying, that's all I'm going to say on it. I'm not going to beg and scrape. I believe God that the money will come. There's someone who's been blessed and the Lord's going to put you just write it off and we give you thanks. Those of you who've got a company, you want to donate something to our charity, Mana International. Sort code is 20 6790, account number 00525235. We can give you a receipt for your money and you can put it against your account. However you want to do it, that's up to you. But I can tell you, God will bless you for helping us become perfect online amen i tell you in particular what we want to do is we want to start putting the praise and worship online uh, but we can't do it at the moment consistently because the equipment that we have does not show us in a good light it doesn't show us in a good light which means it doesn't represent the lord we serve in a good light all right so we're not we're not doing it yet but we're doing it soon come on i need an amen on that i need an amen on that so it doesn't matter if you want so if you if your contribution is 50 just make sure you put digital so that when we add it all up we're there all right <laughs> let's go let's go let's go amen let's go amen so father we thank you for the tithes and the offerings and the donations that have come into WGMI today. People who are given by faith, trusting in your word. We, Father, we thank you that by your anointing, by your power, by your blessing, by your provision, every single need is met. And Father, we thank you for that today. Bless your people, God, as they give in the midst of the famine. They give and trust you that you will plant them in Goshen. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's give the Lord a praise. One more, one, one bigger one. Another one. Amen. 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 God is God is amazing. Now, over the, for the month of July, our focus is on faith and the supernatural. Our faith we and we're starting re resuming a month's worth of Bible study come this Wednesday. If you're like me, I used to use my Wednesday to go cycling, but this the Lord told me off. And I got confirmation of the telling off from a person as well. So I know that's the Lord saying you can't be called Word of God ministry and ask people to survive on just Sunday service. So we'll be teaching as well as preaching. All right. So Wednesday. Amen. So those of you will send the link out so you can join us. I think we're going to do it by Zoom for now. But eventually we'll be going out on YouTube so that others can join us as well who are not in the, in the, in the link. So from this Wednesday, we'll teach throughout July, August, we'll stop holidays and so on. And then we'll pick up again in September. All right. So look out for the Zoom. If you haven't given your phone number, please give it so that we can make sure you you're in the loop as well. Amen. 
All right, that's good. So faith in the supernatural is our theme for this month. We're going after all things faith, all things supernatural. We're developing our faith. We're growing our faith again. I want to talk to you about a theme that's been in my spirit for the last few weeks. And I really want to thank God for all of the ministers who've been preaching over the last few weeks and months. Certainly last month on the family, wasn't focused on the family beautiful, wasn't it? It was really good. Really thank God for that. And we're going to keep doing that and trust God that everything we go after, we're going to see results. Now, how many of you are believers in here? Online, how many of you are believers? Oh, that's 20,000. I see hands gone up as well. All right. Amen. All right. So now when I talk on this subject, you're going to see that... Um, that faith does come under attack. Faith comes under attack. And I want to show you something today. Take my time and I want to build my case. So you know we're going to go through some scriptures and we're going to start building our faith. Amen? All right. So now let's go over then, please, to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 6. There we go. And we're in the New King James Version. And I want you to see this scripture with me. And as you're seeing it, can I, I can come down, can't I? No, no I'm not trapped. And as you, as you look at this scripture, I want you to see how many times you see it says, the Lord. All right? And I also want you to see how many times you see this, the sentence or the few words that says, I will. All right? So keep, out, keep looking out for those two terms, words, and then we'll go from there. Are you ready? Ready, set, let's read. Um, Therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. <laughs> Easy, yeah? One. I will bring you out from where? Of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage. And I will redeem you with a what? Outstretched arm and with great judgments. Amen? All right, let's keep going. I will take you as my people. And I will. Then you shall know that I am. who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you, where? Into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give it to you as an inheritance. I am the Lord. Right, now stay there. Don't, don't, don't go any further. Go back, please. Yeah, lovely. Now, how many times did you see the Lord? And how many times did you see I will? Very good. Very good. Father, we thank you for your word today. I borrow... One of my wife's sentences, when she says, I am arrow. Well, Lord, I ask you to fire me today. Fire me into the hearts through the word, the hearts of your people, into the atmosphere. We want to pierce the atmosphere of doubt and fear, negativity. We cut it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. All right, so you, we read this scripture. Now I want you to see verse 9, please. Look at verse 9. So Moses spoke thus to the children of Israel, but what happened? But they did not heed Moses. Why? Because of anguish of spirit and cruel bondage. Amen? Amen anguish of spirit and cruel bondage. <laughs> now, church, 
want you to come over with me now. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 4, please. Exodus chapter 4. And I want you to go, please, to verse 21. Sorry, 31, 31, 31. So the people believed. Say that with me, please. So the, say, say it loud, please. Say, say it louder, please. Right, so the people believed. Say that again, please. The people believed. You see that? So the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked on their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. Amen? Now, all of this is taking place, church. All of this is taking place in the backdrop of the children of Israel under severe oppression, severe affliction. They were slaves, church. They were slaves. The children of Israel were slaves. They were slaves. They were not always slaves. Church, they went to Egypt as guests. They were invited. A bit like our parents and family members who, who were, we were invited to this country. But after a while... They, 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 the sign on the pub said, you're not welcome. Go back home, you beep, beep, beep. They were slaves. They had become slaves. I'll tell you how. Because the Bible says that when they went to Egypt, uh, remember they got there via Joseph. Joseph um, invited them. <laughs> and we might have to go back even further than that. The Bible says that Joseph was a dreamer. And he told his brothers about a dream. Careful how you share your dreams, okay? Because not everybody is saved. That's what my pastor used to say. So they shared a dream. He shares the dream that I'm going to rise above you. I'm going to, my star is going to reign over you and so on. And his brothers hated him. And the Bible says that it didn't help that his father made him an Armani suit. He had a jacket, the coat of many colors. It was so beautiful. Nobody else. Ne I mean, come on. How can you have a? <laughs> how can you have twelve brothers and you make one a jacket? <laughs> I mean, praise God if you've got the jacket. But if you're one of the others who are looking at him, okay, why has he got a jacket and I haven't? How come? You know, sometimes you, if you're in a family and you're a certain age, you get the hand me down. And your, your, your dress is a little shorter than everyone else's own. Or your shirt is, the sleeve is a little short. Because, you know, it gets handed down. Those of you who've got children of the same age, you know what I'm talking about. And sometimes that's okay. But in this case, the father made him a jacket and nobody else had one. None of the, none of the other brothers. And he was, a, he was a bit of a telltale. So the Bible says that they, they see him coming afar and they say, there he comes. You know, you know, you just have hatred in your family. <laughs> we should preach this last week. You know, you just got fam, what we call sibling rivalry. Yeah, I, I, I work in social work and I can tell you that there's often conflict between brothers and sisters, particularly if they grow up in a traumatic situation. It can sometimes lead to trauma. Now, the Bible says that, I'm not going to spend too much time there, the Bible says that they decide, look, let's kill him. And they made up their mind to kill him, but eventually they decide, no, 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 we can't kill him. So they don't kill him, they throw him in a pit. And as you know the story, he comes out of the pit, he gets taken to um, a palace. From the palace, he goes to a dungeon. He ends up in, a, in, in prison because his, uh, Potiphar's wife wants to sleep with him. He says, I can't do that. Leave me alone. Are you mad? And you know the story. But they told a lie on him. He ends up in prison. But in prison, church, and this is very important, even though you're in adversity, never lose your spirit. Never lose your faith. Even though you're going through tough times, never lose your faith. Never lose your, even though things are not working according to plan. I mean, come on, church. You went to take food to your brothers. You end up in prison and, 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 and you end up, end up being a thing. But he never lost his 
mindset. He remained positive throughout the whole time, church. Whatever you're going through in your life, do not allow the enemy to make you say something that's going to get you into trouble. This morning I was driving into work and uh, sorry, into church. And as I'm coming down the Air Force 6, this guy comes right up behind me, flashing me, flashing me, flashing me. Get out of the lane. Now, of course, I'm not going to get out of the lane because you have no lanes that you take overtake. But I noticed this. So I, he, he comes around me, and because I did not come out of his way, he cuts across me, just you know, easing my bumper. I said, okay, it's going to be one of them days. So that's it. A bit further down, another person does the same thing to me. And I realized the enemy is trying to goad me. He's trying to goad me because, you know, the first thought will chase him. Put the, put the car in third gear and go after him and cut back. These are the thoughts that came to my mind. But of course I said, nah, I can't even be bothered. You see church? Now, what you got to be careful of is how you respond in adversity. How do you respond in adversity? When you're going through tough times, how is your behavior? How do you behave when you're under pressure? So the enemy is trying to goad me. He's trying to tease me. Come on, come on, then let's have you. And then all of a sudden, ah! and there's problems. You see what I mean? So what you do is that you keep your mind calm. Uh, I'll give you another quick story. I went to B&Q this week to buy something for the house, whatever. And I'm there trying to, you know, be a good f father and husband. I'm dashing around trying to get in. I get in there in time and I'm looking for a bulb because the bulb in our bathroom broke. And when the women say there's no bulb, husband has to respond straight away. Husband. Uh, <laughs> so I get, I get there, church. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I find the bulb. And I get to the desk and my wallet's not there. And I, you know when you know that you went in there with the wallet. So I'm like, Lord, Lord. And all of a sudden I found myself crying. I found myself crying because obviously what came back to me is that they just stolen my car and now the wallet's gone. But, but come on, you see, if you're not honest, you see, you're not seeing your faces, but I can tell you, 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 you must understand when we all go through adversity, there's a way how you respond. And, and what first thing have is memory. Again, more adversity again. And I said, Lord, don't let this happen to me again. Don't let this happen to me again. Lord, don't let this happen to me. And I'm, and I'm crying and I call Georgia. Georgia said, calm down, calm down. I'm like, you're no help to me whatsoever. <laughs> but of course, of course, she's calming me down because if you're not calm, you're not going to think straight. So she's, you know, but I'm not wanting to hear that. I'm wanting to hear, oh, don't worry, baby, it's going to be okay. But that's not what I got. I got, calm yourself down, man, what I'm doing. So we, 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 I calm myself, and then I go back and I speak to the guy. The guy says, it's time to go now. It's 8 o'clock. I said, I know you want to go home. You know, I'm getting prickly now. I know you want to go home, but I need to find my... So he says, where were you last? And we walk round to the last place I was, and there is my wallet sitting in the aisle. What do you do when adversity comes? What is your reaction? What is your response? I cried, but I also prayed. And when I called George, George when I got home and told her, she said, don't worry, I told the angel to take, make sure, guard your wallet and so on. So the angels were dispatched. Now, I want you to understand, church, all of what I'm saying to you is possible. It's what you do. If I said, oh, bad luck. And now let me tell you this now. Let me give you one final bit of the story now. I get to the desk and the lady says, did you find your wallet? I said, yes. And, she, and I said to her, oh, I said, ma'am, because it was only last week, uh, uh, my car. This is what she said to me. There's some bad juju on you. Now, me, now, so, so watch now, watch Here's my turn now. I said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> now, I'm talking to the devil now. I'm talking to the devil now. I said, no, 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 no. There is no, and I nearly let the word juju out of my mouth. I said, no, no. I said, none of that, none of that. I am blessed. Now, 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 all of that sounds funny, but not funny. 
but that's a truth of what happened to me this week. So what's, what's, what's trying to happen now? The enemy is trying to goad me. He's trying to drag me into something where I open my mouth and allow the enemy to come in. Because the angels are waiting for your words, but the demons are also waiting for your words. Absolutely correct, church. Absolutely correct. And your mentality, your mentality, what you, how you behave when you're facing that situation is the crucial element. Amen? So you got to make sure that no matter what you're facing, and I know because the Holy Spirit told me that there are people in the church and who online also who are going through anguish of spirit. They are going through because you're going through stuff that you never thought you should be going through. You can't understand why it's happening to you. You don't get it. You, 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 you did everything you're supposed to do, but something has not worked out the way you thought it should work out. And because of that, you are going through anguish of spirit. Can I get one amen? But I got news for you. I got news for you. In that time, I know a God, and I'm going to talk to you about him today. Well, maybe next week now because of the time. But I want, I'm laying you up good so that you when, you, when we preach this next week, you can go, oh, yes, Pastor, I hear what you're saying. Now, listen, in your marriage, there will be moments when it's high. Oh, my goodness me. And, you know, those moments when you're loved up beyond measure. No, nobody's saying amen. All right. But there will be times when uh, you, you got to talk your way through. You got to pray your way through. You got to think. There'll be times in your family when all is great. And my family is the greatest family ever. And there's no other family like that. And then there are times when you can't stand my family and you want to shoot every one of them. Because, because things go up and down. Things come cyclically. And you've got to be able to manage yourself correctly in each situation that you're going through. Now, the scripture I gave you showed us, God said, I have heard the anguish of my people. Let me tell you, church, there is nothing more dangerous than a mother in particular who is grieving for her child. If a mother starts praying for you, believe me, church, it is a scary thing because that person's heart is broken and they cry to God out of that anguish. Look at Hannah. Hannah was an example. Hannah cried to God and Eli said, why are you drunk this summer morning? She said, I'm not drunk. This is not drunkness. You're supposed to be the leader of the house. This is anguish of spirit. And I want you to hear me, church. What you've got to learn to do is when you're going through these seasons, is not say things that's going to release the enemy, but you speak through your anguish to God. Cry out to the Lord, my husband, father, my marriage, Lord, my boyfriend, whatever. Cry out to God and let God, and when you cry from that depth of soul, God connects with you. Many times we pray, church, and you know what? Our prayer don't even hit the sky. Because we're praying but we're not really praying in faith. We're not praying truth. We're not, we're not being honest. If I, never, if, I, if I never told you anything about my week last week, you'd have said, oh, pra praise the Lord. Oh, Pastor Dennis, he can say anything he likes. He's got a great life. But you, you, you don't know what I'm going through. And sometimes it's not good for the leader to tell you what he's going through because some people can't handle it. If you, tell, if you tell some people what you're going through, they say, the pastor's going through that. There's no chance for me. <laughs> and then, when you're looking for them, you can't find them. So, so I hold on to my stuff. But when I share things with you, I share things to help edify you, to show you that not only am I facing it, but this is how I dealt with it. Amen. So, so watch now. What, what, what happens now? God says, I have heard. No, he, he saw, he saw, but he heard because the cry of our sister went up before God. 
Don't ever oppress a poor person. Don't ever oppress a widow. Don't ever oppress a motherless or a fatherless because God hears their prayer. You have to be careful who you take on. And don't ever cross an anointed person. <laughs> because God don't like that. If you oppress a poor person, God will judge you. If you oppress a widow, God ain't happy with you. If you try and steal from someone who's poor, God is not happy with you. And he marks your card. If you remember the Amalekites, God said to Israel, to, to Saul when he became king, I remember what the Amalekites did to the children of Israel when they were walking through the wilderness. They came up from behind and attacked them. And now he said, wipe them out. God don't play. So, he, he, so now I want to show you something, then I'm going to stop because of the time. But I want to, let's break this down quickly. Take, take us back. No, 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 just see this now. Before we go, look at, four, look at, look at verse four, chapter 4, verse 3. So what happened there? Moses, if you remember, you know the story. Go to, is it chapter 3, Pastor Joe? Where, where, where Moses meets God at the burning bush. And Moses, it's chapter 3. In chapter 3, the Bible says he's up on the mountain. He goes up. He, he sees from a distance. The Bible says he sees a tree burning, but not being consumed. And I've told you in the past, if it was Pastor Dennis, he'd have kept walking. But, but, but God knows how to get Moses' attention. He'll do something else to get my attention. So Moses said, let me go and see. Oh, really? I'll see you later. He goes and God says, what are you doing? Take the shoes off your feet. The way you are is holy ground. And then he says, actually, I want you to go and call my, get my people out of Israel. And this is how the journey starts. The divine calling. So at chapter 4, he goes. After a long battle, Lord, I can't talk. Lord, um, my tongue. You know, like some of you make when I, I, I asked somebody this morning to lead prayer, not going to call anyone's name. And they said, yeah, thank you very much, but no, thank you. I was joking with them a little bit, but <laughs> now they're, no, they're going to try and find out who it was now. The... My point to you is, Moses said to God, God, I cannot speak. I don't have Language to speak to Pharaoh. God, the Bible says, became angry with him and said, okay, I'm going to send your sister. And she'll speak. You speak to her. She'll speak to, well, it was her brother. It was his brother, Aaron. So between them, they have a healing lesson. So the Lord says, what's that in your hand? He says, it's a rod. The Lord said, throw down the rod. He throws it down, it becomes a snake. Lord, Moses, Lord, okay, he said, pick it up, picks it up by the tail. He says, put your hand in your chest. He puts his hand in his chest, it comes out leprous. Lord, he says, now put your hand back, puts it back, and it's clean again. And he says, when you go to speak to the children of Israel, do those two miracles. And if they're still doubting you, take a cup of water, from the river Nile and pour it out and it shall become blood. <laughs> that was the miracle training that Moses and Aaron had in preparation to go and speak to Pharaoh. Now, church, I want you to hear me carefully now. Pharaoh, Pharaoh in those days was regarded as a god. Sending Moses and Aaron and particularly Moses who grew up in that palace to go and speak to Pharaoh, and to tell Pharaoh, let your most valuable asset go, because you know, people enslave people because of the asset value. Do you understand what I mean by asset value? I take you and I put you in slavery because I don't have to pay anybody else to do my work. You do it and I'm not paying you a dime. 
And God says to Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. He goes, he speaks to the children of Israel, and he says, guess what? God has heard your prayer, and you shall be delivered. And that's where we see the verse where they say, so the people believed. Amen? So you hear the first message you hear on Sunday, you believe. On Sunday morning, you believe. But then you go on and by Tuesday, you start believing. Because what happens is, church, when you first believe, you're inspired. And you're, 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 you're yes, amen, praise God. Particularly if you're one of our churches, you know, we Pentecostal, we're ameners. Say, amen, I'm ready, praise God. And you go out there, the devil goes, the devil goes <laughs> and by Tuesday. So that's why when we get to chapter 6, the same people who believed in chapter 4, now, not only are they cursing Moses, they're now saying, why have you come and bothered us? We were happy. Now, I want you to hear me good, church. Slavery, oh gosh, slavery, church, is a lifestyle that eventually you can get used to. And you, you, can live, you can live in a certain way that being a slave, it's okay. Uh, you go into a routine, you, you, your environment, you're comfortable, you know where your little cup is, you know where your little bit of bread's coming, you know what your work is, by now you, you've adapted physically to the labor and your mentality changes. And all of a sudden, you're comfortable being a slave. So when they, oh, church, listen, I haven't got time to go into this. I'll try next week. But listen, have you thought of some relationships? And in the work I'm in, I want to be very sensitive when I say this. Some relationships should not continue. Listen carefully to me. I'm not saying you're divorced. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But there are certain relationships, certain things that were going on in relationships. You know they're wrong. They know it's wrong, but they stay in it because it's what they know. Sometimes it's economic reasons. Sometimes it's financial. Sometimes it's emotional. Sometimes it's self-esteem reasons. And this is the same reason why some people who have bad habits or they have become they they they, they have uh, addictions. They know it's wrong, but they can't break the addiction. Do you understand what I mean? Whether it be alcohol, whether it be cigarette, whether it be marijuana, whether it be, you know, there are some Christians who still smoke. Even though they know, even though the Bible is clear to them that they must present their bodies as holy sacrifice and so on, they still do it. Because it's a habit and no condemnation is coming from my mouth. Because I remember that when I got saved, it took me a while to get rid of that. I got rid of marijuana instantly, but the cigarette, I carried on. I carried on for about six months, and I had my little mint before I come to church. I popped my mint. Not, I'm not knocking anybody. I'm just telling you that God knows what all of us grapple with. And what happens is, church, we become comfortable. We become comfortable. And even though we know it's wrong, the mind set. The mindset is there. You know you should not be sleeping with your boyfriend because he's not saved, A, and B, you're not married, but it just can't. Yes, Pastor, but no, but and all of a sudden the whole thing get from bad to worse because the mindset has to change before the behavior changes. One amen is enough. You know you shouldn't do it. You know you shouldn't do it. You drink one glass and then you, you feel merry and you're not. And you know the second glass is going to push you over the edge. But still you go on. Nobody's here. Let me try and say amen over here. Let me, let me preach to the plant. Come on, plant. Say amen. And I know because I have been through it myself. Habits, patterns of behavior. Now, what God has come to do is set you free. <laughs> let, 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 let me say again. He knows he ain't condemning you, but he's come to set you free. 
Let me try over this side. He knows, he understands, but he's come to set you free. In, in other words, church, there are levels. There are levels. There are certain walks. Let me say this to you. Every one of us here could come up higher in our faith. Anybody here? Can anybody say amen? Every one of us, every one of us have got behaviors in our life now that God is tolerating, but he knows that when you get rid of those things, you're going to come up higher. Is, am I talking the truth? How do I know, pastor? Because I'm in that situation. Certain patterns, certain... Let, let, let me give you a quick one, Lord. TV. TV. I, I, I love my... I, I, I'm, Lord, he set me free one day. He set me... Now, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I grew up in the Caribbean. That's my excuse. See the excuse? You see the excuse straight away? Before the confession come, the excuse come. And, and in the Caribbean, we are, we are dramatic people. And so when I watch one program, I can't leave. I can't just watch one. I need the next one. Anybody here? And then I need oh, one more. All right, one more. And me and the clock and the alarm and everything fighting. You've got to get up in the morning. Da, 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 da. Now, imagine if I said, Dennis, I want you to spend four hours in prayer. <laughs> no, no, they're stoning me. They're stoning me one by one. All right. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> so, so, that I know for myself. And sometimes the Holy Spirit said to me, that's enough, Dennis. Come on, anybody here? <laughs> oh, I'm not alone, Lord. I'm not alone. I'm not. That's enough. Now, when, when the spirit, when your spirit says, because your flesh will never say that's enough, your flesh will eat and 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 eat. And even when the belly is full, it, but, uh, let's take one more. So it's got to be something higher than the flesh. You know, you eat that chocolate. I go in that, I'm, I'm a chocolate man. I'm a chocolate man. I love my chocolate. I'll go into that petrol station and I'll see the chocolate. I say, all right, let's take a little one. And all of a sudden, I'll come up with a big bar of galaxy. What's happening? What's happening? The habit, the, the, the taste, the sweetness is in the mouth and I can't stop. I want to stop. Eh, put it down. You know what I do sometimes? I throw it to the back of the car. So then I, got, then I have to park up, climb over. What am I saying? What am I saying? You know what I'm talking about. And you know I'm telling you the truth. What God is trying to do is free you from all of that. So the slaves, the, the, the people here, the people, the slaves here said, Yay, praise God, he's come to deliver me. Praise God. Pastors, pray finally preaching my sermon. By chapter 6, get out of my face. Why you keep trying to cut my business and so on? Because now it's a battle. Now it's a war. It's a war in the soul. It's a war. And when you go home, you know there's stuff you've got to do. You might have to empty some stuff in the sink. And even as you're pouring it out, it's... <laughs> but you're pouring it because you know. You might have to take the chocolate, take the hammer to it, put it in the toilet, wipe it around the bowl to free yourself from it. But whatever you need to do, do what you need to do so that you can get free, so that God can take you where he wants to take you. I might have gone overboard with the bowl of the toilet bit, but you get my point, yes? Do what you need to do. Sometimes it's a delete on the phone. Sometimes it's certain numbers have to be deleted because at certain times, the most difficult times of the evening, when the, the sun goes down and the moon not quite rise just yet, it's those lonely moments. It's those lonely moments. What's in the fridge? Who can I call? What can I drink? Who can I talk to next? What can I watch? Those are the moments, church. And those are the moments now you need to put on some gospel. Put on the scripture. Take out your Bible. Plug it in your ears. <laughs> I know I've been a bit excessive today, but I think you get my point. And so what we're talking about as I close is this. I'm going to close on this. 
what you got there in verse, it, it, what you got in chapter four and what you see in chapter six is the difference between words and lifestyle. The words, hey, now six is lifestyle. Now, what happened in chapter six? In chapter six, God spoke to them, and we're gonna, we haven't got time to go into it now, so we'll pick it up by the grace of God next Sunday. I want you to see, if you've got some time, read it in your, in your own time. That scripture that we read today is the most powerful scripture bar none, in my opinion. When you get a chance, read it. Seven times the word I will. Three or four times I am the Lord is mentioned. But verse 9 says, they did not heed. Because the difference between your head and your spirit is different. All right? I think we should pray, don't you? I think we should pray to close. Those of you who are last, with us in line, join us. We're going to pray now. Now, I want you to hear, and I want you to hear me, and I want you to repeat after me. There is therefore now no condemnation. Say that with me. Who walk not after the flesh, but by the Spirit. Amen? And the rest we, we could, I can give it to you, the scripture in Romans for you to read. Whatever I preach today is not meant to condemn anyone, but it is to bring to light things that have so far remained in the dark. Anything that stays in the dark, it will continue to mock you until you bring it to light. Make yourself accountable to someone. Tell someone what you're facing. Let them support you in prayer. But the longer you keep it in secret is the more it becomes a force in your life. Anger issues, whatever they might be, tell someone. We need to talk. And don't go and tell a sister. If you're a brother, don't tell a sister. Hello? If you're a brother, go and tell another brother. Oh, nobody's here. All right. If you're a sister, don't go and tell. You can tell Pastor Dennis because Pastor Dennis is neither male nor female. <laughs> <laughs> you, you like that one? You like that one? <laughs> you don't like that one? All right. So what, <laughs> what I mean is, for those of you who can't understand me, what I mean is you can tell Pastor Dennis because it's not going to be about an attachment to me. Because the more you share your soul with someone is the more you become close to that person. So be careful who you share with. Amen? So my advice to you in the first instance, share with another brother or share with another sister who you trust. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise. Let's stand. We only have a minute left. And I want you to do something radical with this message today. I know that I made it funny and I deliberately tried to make it a bit lighthearted because I know it's difficult subjects we're dealing with. And I know it brings up stuff for people. I understand that because it brings up stuff for me. So I want you to do something radical. If something, if Holy Ghost said something to you, if said, that's you, gently, the Holy Ghost will never condemn you, but you need to act on it. So if you want to just say, oh, Lord, I, you spoke to me, just walk up, walk up, change your position and just say, yeah, that's me, Lord. You don't have to tell anybody what it was. You don't have to tell anybody what it's about. You don't have to say nothing. You just need to come up, change your position, change your position. If the Holy Ghost has spoken to you about something, change your position. That's a way of saying, Lord, I accept that you're speaking to me. I'm changing my position too. I'm, I'm standing there. I'm standing here, but I'm standing there as well. All right? Gently. Sister S. Holy Spirit, rain down. You know what? Just, just. <laughs> Can you just say something? My sister, my sister, my sister, my sister.